Hello, this video covers a new tool and procedure we use to address chronic communication and navigation system faults. This technique may be used for troubleshooting and for proactive health checks on the ComNav system. We created this test due to lack of ability to duplicate chronic radio frequency RF issues on the ground. The current FEM simply instructs the operator to replace LRUs and then fly again. If the problem repeats, they continue down the FEM and replace the next system LRU and then fly again. Once the LRUs are exhausted, the cables are tested with the TDR and then the antenna is replaced. Testing the cables with the TDR is an issue. It's not only hard to use, it also does not test the cables at the system's operating frequencies. This has led to operators simply replacing all the cables after exhausting all of the LRUs and the antenna. This is inefficient, expensive, and creates costly delays and cancellations. Our new procedure allows the operators to quickly test the ComNav systems even on the line. Simply pull the LRU and test the cables, connectors, and antenna at the system's operating frequency right from the EME rack. The Frequency Domain Reflectometer, FDR, transmits an incident wave down the system's transmission line and out the antenna. Healthy cables and antennas ensure the incident wave is transmitted with minimal reflection. Any defects in cable, connector, and antenna will result in a reflected wave. This reflected wave is measured in voltage standing wave ratio, or VISWAR. A theoretically perfectly matched system impedance results in a VISWAR of 1.0. The CMMs and our new AMM procedure denotes a maximum VISWAR for every RF system. For example, the 737 VHF has a maximum VISWAR of 2.0. If the maximum VISWAR is exceeded, as in this example, the operator may use the distance default function on the FDR to find the source of the standing waves. High standing waves lead to weak, intermittent operation of RF systems. Further, high standing waves may damage the transceivers or transponders. Therefore, it is important to test for high VISWAR prior to replacing LRUs and to periodically test VISWAR to increase reliability of your ComNav systems. The new FDR may test all the aircraft RF systems from the 2 MHz HF system all the way up to the 4.5 GHz radio altimeter systems. Now let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, we're going to do a VISWAR test on the ATC transponder uh, antenna. We're using the BIRD Sighthawk uh, 4000. We have the frequency set for uh, ATC. We've got the starting frequency at 1000 megahertz, the ending at 1100. We've got the correction on, which shows that it was calibrated for that frequency. I'm using this cable. We used a, uh, a dummy plug for the open, short, and the load. We have our limit line. This is the red line here set at 2.0. That's our upper VISWAR limit uh, that we got from the CMM of the antenna. And our standing wave is not showing anything right now. So we've got a male uh, coax contact uh, adapted to our cable here so we can plug directly into the rack connector without disconnecting any, uh, any connectors. So we're gonna be seeing exactly what the transponder sees. So I'm going to plug this into the bottom antenna coax plug and I got to push against the spring tension and then we'll see the standing wave show up. Okay, we're testing the uh, lower uh, ATC antenna right now. You can see our VISWAR about 1.42 is our uh, very highest peak right there. I'm going to switch to the upper antenna. Press it in. And this one about 1.4. 1.4 is our highest peak right there. Still below the limit line and everything is checking good on this one. Okay, we're uh, testing the transponder antenna right now and we're plugged into the number two transponder and what we're getting is a really, really high visoir of uh, 14, 15. And the reason for that is because there's a switch, an antenna switching relay in the middle there that we have to switch over to this side. Uh, to use this transponder antenna. But this is a good example of what you'll see if you have an open in your cable, is you'll get a really high visoir like that, way off the charts. 
um, and then you would use the distance default uh, feature to try to find out where the open starts. But in this case, it would probably show us exactly where that switch is at, uh, where the open starts. To test the HF system, we simply remove the HF transceiver from the rack, this in order to verify healthy cabling and connectors into the installed HF coupler. There is no need to access the tail. We see here that the right HF side tests good at 1.10 visoir. This is a Chronic 787 that has had all the LRUs replaced, some more than once. We now move to the left side. You see here that the left side also reads 1.10 visoir. Now that we verified good cabling and connectors all the way up to the HF coupler, now we simply do a bonding test of the antenna and the coupler assembly. We performed the bonding test and it failed. The HF coupler to antenna feeder connector was attached to a primed surface. This led to arcing. This 18 month chronic issue did not come back after we cleaned up and properly terminated all the connections. This is the test of the TCAS system and cabling. Frequency is set at 1030 is the start frequency. And 1090 is the stop frequency. The limit line is set at 1.5 visoir. We will now show you how to change the limit line to 2.0. Select the limit icon and type 2.0. These values are based on the CMM and our new AMM limits. You see that we are already calibrated for the start stop frequencies. You can tell by the corrected on message displayed in the right corner. If the start stop frequency is changed, this will change to correction off. That's to notify you that you need to recalibrate with the easy to use calibration tool. You see here that the TCAS transponder has been removed and the eight connectors are easily accessible to measure upper and lower antennas. Four elements per antenna. We have our male adapter installed. So we may plug this directly into the AirRank 600 connector. We will start with the bottom antenna by pressing against the slight tension and then viewing the standing wave. This antenna element is close to the limit, but it's still within the CMM AMM tolerances. We selected Auto Scale to take a closer look, and we see that we are at 1.9 visoir at the peak. We will now test the remaining elements. Another cable, we're still on the bottom antenna. This one's getting up to about 1.8, so it's still below the limit. And we'll switch to another contact. Okay, that one is right about at 1.91. And the fourth one. And again, it's right at 1.9. So that's the lower antenna. All those readings are below the limit. The upper antenna, the four cables go to the upper antenna. And there's my reading for the upper, which is much lower than what the lower one is. So this one's reading about 1.5, 1 1.55. And let me go to another contact. Same thing, we're much lower, we're about 1.6. The third one, again, one point, well, close to 1.7 there. And the last one, we're at 1.7. So they are within the visoire limits, uh, but you can see some are better than others. and. Uh, some of that could be caused by the connections or the bonding of the antenna, uh, but that's what you could go after if, if any of your uh, readings are out of limits. Take the antenna off, check the bonding, and it could be just the antenna itself. We will now test the VHF system right from the rack. Very easy to do, and it allows us to eliminate the coax and antenna as a possible cause. Our limit line for the visoir is set at 2.0. You can see the red line there. Contact we're using is a small size 5 coax contact that will go right into the rack and use the contact that the, uh, the transceiver is using. So I'm going to plug this into the coax contact for the 
okay and I'm plugged in now and you can see the standing wave there in the yellow and our limits well below the limit we're at about 1.5 is the upper the highest peak of our wave there so this antenna is good transmission line is good and nothing left to do the SATCOM system can be very problematic to troubleshoot. Not only is it hard to duplicate, but to access the cables, connectors, and the antenna can typically require extensive disassembly, such as removal of the stowage bins on the 767. Our new test allows easy access from the E&E rack in the mid-cabin. This to test both low-gain and high-gain SATCOM systems. It also finds the root cause of weak and intermittent systems. Here we have removed the high power amp and are reading through the LNA dip and into the SATCOM antenna. This high visoire is an indication of a bad cable, moisture in the connector, bad antenna bond to the fuselage, or a bad antenna itself. We isolate by using the distance default function. The Sighthawk found the SATCOM antenna is bad. We shot only the antenna here and verified it is well out of limits. 2.7 visoire. This next shot shows the visoire with the new antenna installed. It now has a reading of 1.4. After replacement of this antenna, this chronic SATCOM issue never came back. Now we are going to test the VOR system. We are using the small size 5 coax adapter. And we're going to use that to connect into the Airing 600 connector. Our start and stop frequencies are set for 108 and 118. Our upper limit for Viswire is set to 2.0. Let's now plug into the upper contact in the E and E rack connector. And you can see our Viswire is a little bit over the limit there. Um, when you hit auto scale, you can see exactly where it reaches. So yeah, we're just above that limit line at 116 megahertz. So we're going to have to investigate that one to see what's causing that. Uh, it could be this antenna is maybe not that, not tuned to that frequency, um, but that is what we're looking for when we do a Viswar check, is that standing wave going above the limit line, above that red limit line, is where it's going to give you problems with your system. Your transceiver could be reflecting too much power back, could damage the transceiver, um, and it could cause you know unwanted uh, frequency changes. Okay, we're going to start investigating a, a possible issue here with the VOR antenna that we've identified with the Viswar tester. So we've got both left and right uh, VOR receivers pulled out, and I'm going to go to the antenna connection at the top one for the left VOR, and we can see on our Viswar here that this peak right there is going above that limit line, which we have set at 2.0. So it's about 2.2 is what that reading is showing right now. So that's the left VOR. Now I'm going to switch to the other, the right VOR, same uh, antenna connections, and this one is below the limit. So we believe we have a left VOR antenna problem. Could be the cabling, could be the antenna. Um, but this side, this right side, is good. So we're going to dive deeper into that to figure out what's causing that. But that's the sign of a failed Viswar test is when the standing wave peak goes above our Viswar limit.